Hey, what's up guys? Uh, I had a very busy and productive day today and uh, I just was, I really wanted to share uh, what I got done with you guys because I'm proud of, well, I'm really proud of all of it. Um, so, here we go. Obviously, six, six hour, uh, 1911, not loaded. Um, I showed the other day the beginnings of, of a couple uh, 1911 holsters uh, for the SIG wearing the uh, TLR1, and I wanted to share those with you. Uh, Patrick wanted one in gray, and uh, wow, I'm just so pleased with the way this one turned out. The edges are coming out nicer and nicer. Oh, I'm building uh, better, more consistent light channels for these guys, and uh, the retention's really nice. You know, not going anywhere. Nice and smooth, good wide opening there. And this one has a uh, a totally straight uh, cant. The center of gravity on this holster is a little bit high because I try to make them with as little kydex as possible. Um, to get in the way of you getting into your pockets and stuff. Because I've had, uh, and I've made, I've made and had holsters where, you know, whatever I have in my front pocket, like my pocket knife, will chew up the holster a little bit or it'll click when I walk or something, you know. Or um, this, uh, the back part of the holster will prevent me from being able to, like, get to my wallet and stuff. So I like to just keep them uh, tight and out of the way. And uh, you'll see that, that that philosophy comes into play with uh, with this one also for a uh, for the same setup for uh, Tim and this one has a slight forward cant to it and uh, given that they sort of start at a similar size I uh, decided to go and make this one a little asymmetrical but it's got a good angle and angled cut here so you of course you can get in your front pocket you know, no matter what you're wearing. And uh, this uh, doesn't extend too far off the back to get in the way of your back pockets. So this one I'm very pleased with as well. So we'll... Uh, man, this guy uh, has a uh, scorpion. And I think this is going to look great. I've been getting a few requests for the... Uh, for the for the for the Sig Scorpion, and uh, I saw one at the gun show, and I almost got it just to uh, <laughs> just to see how good it would look with the uh, with the Coyote tan, but I didn't, you know. So I'm very pleased with this one, and uh, I uh, had sort of fallen out of love with the .06 thickness. Kydex, I found it you know difficult to work with, and I didn't really see a whole lot of utility in it. I didn't think it was very substantial, but I've started using it more and more for uh, small projects or for stuff where uh, weight could be a consideration, like uh, for like a very concealable mag carrier. Actually, just the other day, I made one for my uh, P238 out of uh, a 06 thickness. Uh, so I did one for a uh, Glock magazine. With it, which I think turned out very well. This will be something that you can, uh, it's very light, so you can carry it around without like a, a weight penalty or a, like a mass penalty. And it's extremely thin. And uh, the definition is very good. I didn't have to make any kind of alterations or do any kind of like secondary or friction retention on this holster. It just pops right in. And, uh, Believe it or not, this little notch here actually engages the, the mag catch on the magazine. So I think this is, uh, I mean, you know, right out of the press, basically. It was it was pretty much perfect. And as you can see, that the definition is, I mean, extremely crisp. So there's that. And uh, I did one for the uh, CZ83 magazine that, uh, you know, my wife picked up that CZ83 for herself. and. Again, you know, this, uh, the definition turned out really well. Um, this holster, this, uh, this one required a little bit of uh, secondary uh, retention dimple here. So, But aside from that, I mean, it's, it's great. I mean, 
I've uh, made the footprint so small on these that I don't even need to curve them or anything. They just, uh, they, they basically flew right together. And uh, I, th I think all it took was developing a certain sensitivity to the material so then I could uh, feel more confident working with something that was thinner a little, and a little more finicky. But I don't know. You live, you learn. So now the, uh, the big deal piece for today was uh, a fellow named... Uh, Nathan had contacted me a, a while ago, and he wanted a holster for his LCR. And Nathan has a, uh, a, a very particular circumstance that, that, that he shared with me. Um, and uh, we got to talking, and we, 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 you know, just like so many people who've contacted me, I've become friends with people through this project, and, and Nathan's one of them. And... Uh, he wanted a uh, uh, a holster for his Ruger LCR that fits extremely tight and also has a paddle. And so I sort of initially like I hemmed and hawed a little bit about it, like, well, I don't really know if I can do that, or you know, I could you know buy one from another manufacturer and adapt it over, and it's going to cost this and cost that. And I I wound up I wound up just sort of like volunteering to do this project, kind of to see if I, I could do it. Um, I didn't really make any promises. And so, sometimes if something's difficult or if I don't know that I, I can do it, I'll kind of just go ahead and, and do it without, uh, rather than you know charging somebody for something that's gonna disappoint them, I'd rather just sort of, you know, kind of personally I'd, I'd rather almost like do it for free, so I can. So if it sucks, I can say, "Oh well, you, you know, well, you know, at least it was free, right?" Um, so this one I'm actually very pleased with. Um, I kind of can't. I mean, it's still a prototype, but uh, but it works. So here's the uh, the front face of the holster, and uh, this guy pops right in, very secure. Um, and here's the paddle setup. It's, uh, the paddle has a curve to it, and you can sort of, here I'll show you on, uh, on this belt, I'll just break that out. So, the belt will come up behind the paddle, and then you can sort of work it in, like around the hook, there, like that. that. There you go. There's your paddle holster. It will uh, hold itself in place and uh, be relatively comfortable against the body. It's still pretty low profile. Um, the olive, the olive drab winds up looking very good. I'm very pleased with the overall fit and finish of this holster. The uh, extra tight retention, the close crop here along the, uh, the cylinder. And uh, I don't know how many of these paddles I'll do. It kind of absorbs a real big chunk of that 0.125 uh, kydex. But I think I could offer this as an option. It'd be like the, uh, the molly plate uh, adapter, a sort of like non-standard, you know, optional extra. So I think, you know, if, if somebody were to get a normal holster uh, and say, yeah, I want, you know, inch and a half belt loops and I also want a paddle, I guess the paddle would probably, I mean, given the, the, the time and the fitting that it took, because it's got to be made for each particular holster. Um, I don't have a, a universal setup, but, you know, you got to remember what you get when you get something universal. It's going to be much more generalized and much more mass produced. And if you want something custom, it's going to be, you know, of course, a, a custom piece. So I think to make one of these uh, adaptable, to to a uh, to a paddle, I think it'd probably you know wind up turning into something that would cost like twenty bucks normally. So I don't know the uh, the Molly plate something that I'm thinking is going to price in the the uh, thirty five dollar range. I think 
uh, just because of the, I gotta get somebody else to, to machine cut it and then it's gotta be fit. And, and uh, I don't know, I think it's, I think it's reasonable. I try not to, uh, I try to price things at the level that, you know, I would say, oh, well, you know, I think that's, I think I'd, I would buy that, you know, and, and not a whole lot else. I don't factor in too much labor because, uh, you know, the labor's kind of open-ended. I could spend just, I could spend forever on something if I felt like it. So um, I just think about what I would, you know, spring for if I was a, uh, I mean, I am a gear consumer. I know what certain things are worth to me and what I'll pay for them. That's kind of how I try to view it, you know, mostly from an enthusiast perspective and not from a, you know, number crunching perspective. But, uh, yeah, I was thinking about maybe skeletonizing this, but that would add, like, a really ridiculous amount of labor to it. I don't know how much I would get out of that, you know, because I'm using the whole sheet of kydex anyway. I'm not really going to save anything by cutting little bits of this out. So that's that. There's, uh, there's again, there's Nathan's LCR. And all of these I did with the, um, the process whereby you heat the foam and heat the kydex really gradually. Here are, again, the, uh, the mag carriers that I got done today, both of which I'm uh, particularly proud of. And then here are the uh, 1911 holsters that I got done today. I don't know if you can really, really make out the definition. Here, let, me, let me switch this off so we can check out the definition on this guy. The camo kind of hides it, so you need to use the shadow to see it. Oop. Man, I can't wait to see this with the uh, with the Sig Scorpion. And uh, then, of course, this uh, gray one for Patrick. So, uh, thanks for watching, guys. Um, and I'll uh, update you tomorrow. We've got a really fun project in the works, and I hope we uh, finally get the stuff we need for it so we can finish it tomorrow. It's going to be a, uh, it's going to be really special, something really wonderful, and I'm very excited for it. It's some, it's some next level shit. All right, well, I'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks.